It is said that he saved as many as one million people from starvation. His work has brought him worldwide recognition and the Nobel Peace Prize. Norman Borlaug has dedicated his life to reversing food shortages around the globe. Born in 1914, he was raised in the community of Cresco in Northeast Iowa, where his Norwegian immigrant family had a farm, and his grandfather taught him all about dedication. Borlaug and his two sisters attended a rural school where he learned quickly that different people across the world share the same basic needs. I learned uh, early there that uh, this ethnic thing was pretty artificial, that the basic values were pretty much the same. He also learned determination from his high school coach, who told him, give it the best God gave you. If you don't, don't bother to compete at all, which Norman Borlaug abided by for the rest of his life. He later went on to the University of Minnesota, where he got a PhD in plant pathology. Sometime afterwards, he was offered a job with the Rockefeller Foundation. His charge was to help alleviate the food shortages in Mexico. Since man has been raising crops, he's also been engineering them to fit certain needs. When man first started harvesting wheat, it only produced a few kernels, and when it matured, the kernels fell to the ground. Then sometime, thousands of years ago, somebody discovered a new type of wheat that did not fall to the ground when it matured. So he brought this back with him, and eventually, the other wheat crossed and began doing the same thing. The oldest and simplest way of crossing wheat is to remove the male pollen producing parts before they have a chance to reproduce, and introduce the pollen from the other plant that you want to cross. Our wheat today is very different from ancient wheat, since our wheat produces many kernels, and not just a few. When Borlaug first arrived in Mexico, farmers distrusted him due to a fungus called stem rust, which was causing the wheat in Mexico to die. When I arrived in Mexico, no trained people, nobody knew how to do anything, no equipment. There had been three disaster stem rust epidemics. And when I moved into this area in Sonora, the farmers wouldn't talk to anyone labeled a scientist. I thought that I could never achieve anything. Two years after first going to Mexico, Borlaug made an incredible breakthrough that would eventually change the world. He discovered that a new, disease-resistant type of wheat could be developed, which would double or even triple the grain produced by each plant. His other work included the idea of shuttle breeding, where he would take the seeds from wheat grown in high altitudes from the first season of the year to low altitudes in the second season of the year, effectively increasing his yield size. It was not easy though, since his boss did not approve. Borlaug became angry and resigned. Luckily, Borlaug had a friend visiting at the time who convinced Borlaug to withdraw his resignation and Borlaug's boss to allow the shuttle breeding. Borlaug also developed a strain of dwarf wheat since when wheat is taller, it has to compete for light. This also effectively increased the yield size. The end result was a super crop that was disease resistant, high yielding, and did not have to compete over light. This resulted in dramatic increases in income and livelihood for millions of Mexican farmers. This made Borlaug believe that this new crop could save starving lives. But it was not easy convincing the leaders of Pakistan and India to adopt his new approach. They had a fear that such a large change could fail and lead to a mass starvation. But he followed the advice of his wrestling coach. Convinced by Borlaug, the leaders of Pakistan and India joined him, in evidence of the cooperation of different nations to save starving lives. After their success, a green revolution swept over the Middle East and Asia. We would have simply had massive starvation and famine if we didn't have this green revolution. We would have probably would have farm every square inch of land and still not uh, be able to produce the kind of food that we are uh, doing today. And so a green revolution uh, was one of the, the 
most significant scientific accomplishments uh, of India. Saving hundreds of millions of lives. For all his hard work, Orlog was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. And receive the diploma and the gold medal of the Nobel Peace Prize for Making him the first person to receive the Peace Prize for work in agriculture. They tell me that if you were authorized adding a prize for food and agriculture, you and the Nobel Foundation, they will help me raise the money like you did for economic. And the chairman, the whole board was there in Stockholm. The chairman when I said this, he threw up his hands, he looked around. He said, I told you two years ago when we established that price, we were on slippery ground. He said, this points out the importance of food and agriculture, which we didn't provide for. But if we open that door once more, there will be a hundred requests. And this will reduce the whole value of the price. Afterwards, he served on the faculty and staff of Texas A&M for 20 years until passing away September 12, 2009, making him the man who saved more lives than any other person who has ever lived.